matchup. It's time to check in with you guys at home. Earlier, we asked you to share your MSI experience with the hashtag HowIMSI, and here's what you sent in. At CatNYPX MSIs like this, featuring my Doge photobomb. The, uh, the name there would have suggested otherwise, and it looks like at Megan's Silly Life MSIs with her fellow SKT fans going not easy, but hard hoon. And finally, at Biasaz MSIs by watching on 12 TVs. That's... A lot of TVs, making sure he doesn't miss any of the action. We have more TVs than we have here. And we love seeing how you guys have been watching the game, so keep tweeting those to us at Lull Esports and use the hashtag HowIMSI. As we continue the international competition, we also are celebrating the reigning world champs with the release of the Samsung White Championship skins. We saw Pawn's Talon yesterday. Now we're going to turn to the top lane for a closer look at Looper's newest legacy, Samsung White Singed. Make me a happy man if we were to see <laughs> Singed coming in. Looper's just running around for chaos, but he might go down as well. Trying to get the kill on the court before he gets out of this one, but he's Lantern. holding his breath. Does never done. The Lantern gets Looper out. Samsung White, the 2014 World Champion. I'm really not happy with the number of singes that are going to be in my game now as a result of that skin. But all of the Samsung White skins will be available starting May 14th alongside the Legacy Esports skins Immortalizing Fnatic, TPA, and SKT, which are in store now through June 1st. Now to the matchup at hand, the LPL's Edward Gaming versus International Wildcard Besiktas. I think it's safe to call this one a David and Goliath story, but what, doesn't, what that doesn't mean is that the Turkish team can't come out and show us something else. Yeah, definitely. Besiktas had a strong showing against AHQ, probably arguably their strongest match so far. And I think that the fast-paced tempo games actually suit these guys. That doesn't mean they get ahead. It just means I think they actually batten down the hatches really well, weather the storm, then try and get some team fights in their favor. And I think these are guys that excel in 5v5s. And when that happens early on in the game, I think they can sneak their way back in. Or 4v1 in the mid lane. They also <laughs> excel at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but also... Um, Coming at each game with something new. I think Besiktas is coming in here with the right mindset. They're getting the most out of every game, and that's what I like to see of out of a team. And they're changing every time that they're playing. They're like, all right, let's try Cassiopeia top. We saw it work. Let's try this. Let's try that. And that's going to throw people off as well. If EDG are not properly prepared for them and overlook this, it could be a trap game for them. Yeah, but I see when we are realistically, I think that EDG will probably come out ahead here relatively swiftly. Yeah. This is at least what I'm expecting. And as well... If EDG wins this game, I think EDG is the king in the style that they play. They play this really aggressive, chaos-oriented style, and they've beaten all the teams that play this kind of style if they beat Besiktas as well. Yeah, and EDG, they, they look more awake today. They had some kind of hiccups yesterday uh, in the interview with their coach. He was talking about the Tristana and the Lulu pick came out because they were a little bit jet-lagged because they weren't confident in their mechanical skill at the point. So then now today, picking the Callista for Deft, picking champions that demand a little bit more from him and aren't as safe. He has to be able to make plays. So today they look a little more awake. Yeah, the reason I'm actually really looking forward to this game is because everyone sees these games as trap games. EDG has to really switch on to make sure they, they get the win. And there's a lot in the LPL actually because it's such a long season. And EDG EDG do this thing where they have mind games. They'll pull out like a fizz pick or they'll throw an Eve in the jungle. They'll do something completely crazy that you'll be like, okay, we're pretty sure they're not serious, but somehow they still won the game and we have to look out for it in the future. Callista is something that they kept doing this with. For, uh, Pawn on Assassins and the Jace was coming out as well. As, like These are all champions that they can play definitely. To what degree, you don't know. So you have to keep on your toes when EDG play this kind of matchup. And Death played... I uh, said before in the interview that when he plays Callista, he's actually showing that he can play the Callista as well as Bang, who we actually noted as the best Callista player. So I think maybe he picks up the Callista again and shows another really great performance. Yeah, well, might pull a ban from him throughout the tournament yeah. too. We'll see, because yeah. that's the mind game they want to throw out there. That's the matchup I actually want to look at here in this game is that bottom lane, because we've talked about how EDG is a multi-threat team, but... Deft being that major one. He's performed extraordinarily well during this tournament. Nardius, though, is, you know, kind of that hope at, of a carry for uh, Besiktas. So is, is that where they're going to win this game from the bottom line? 
Yeah, I actually don't, don't look at me. <laughs> I, I don't think they will win the game, in all honesty, but I think Nadius is actually a really good player. He plays on EU West, I believe. He's up yep. there in the ranks. He's a very good solo Q talent, and his support player, Dumbledore, also backs him up well. Dumbledore, that's <laughs> my favorite support player. <laughs> the number player. one yes, Dumbledore. He killed Faker, so he's already up there in the rankings of legendary support. Oh, man. The, the sheep rooting for the, the Doge. There's, it's <laughs> such a multi-threat team, though, from EDG. That's the problem here, is you really have to just take care of everybody at the same time time like Koro in the top lane you have to keep tabs on clear love pawn sometimes steps up he's like the fourth threat on the team he's the backup so just shutting down def is not enough all so right well with that the teams are ready so we're gonna head over to the on-site location and kick things over to Riv and the gang in the caster booth Thank you very much, Dash, Riv, Atlas, and Kobe still here. And as the teams get ready to draft the champions, let's run down the rosters right quick. On the blue side for Edward Gaming, we have Koro in the top lane, Clear Love in the jungle, Pawn in mid, Daft at AD Carry, and Mako on support. And for Besiktas Esports on the red side, it's Thaldrin in the top lane, Theocles in the jungle, Energy in mid, Nardius at AD Carry, and Dumbledoge at support. Definitely going to be a bit of a mismatch between the lanes here. Ooh. It's going to have to be an early game explosion here for Besiktas if they want to make an impact. I really just want to talk about Besiktas and how they've performed coming through here. They haven't picked up a win, yes, but they've been having the time of their lives. Social media has been going off because 